This is Allegra, owner and founder of The Naked Dog, master dog trainer and dog body language expert. I arrived outside of Park City last night where I'm gonna be house sitting for Roscoe, who is a five-year-old lab. Roscoe is a great dog. He's well-behaved, he doesn't have any issues, and his owners didn't hire me for training. So this isn't an extreme case, super normal dog. But he does have some little issues. He barks quite a bit. He has to wear a bark collar. He is a door dasher, so he runs out the door. And he is a leash puller, most importantly. Because of his leash pulling, most of his activity is playing ball in the yard. He isn't able to go on walks with his owner, especially when she has the kids because it's too much to manage with him pulling. And he's an 80 something pound dog. He's a big boy. Right now he walks on the harness and he pulls. So over the next two weeks, I'm gonna show you how I make this dog into a perfect walker. This is something that I would say most dog owners struggle with. When I go on walks, it seems like 90% of dogs are walking with a straight leash, full tension. So this is something I know almost everyone struggles with. What I'm really excited to show you is everything that I do before I go on the walk that helps me have success on the walk. So if you have problems on the walk and you're trying to fix it on the walk, that is exactly why the problem is proving very hard to fix. Around the house, when we interact, when we move through the world, we have so many opportunities to build the kind of relationship and mindset that's going to lead to a dog that is tuned into you in a more exciting environment. It's really too confusing to have two sets of rules one for inside the house and one for out. So I'm gonna think about all the skills I need to have a good walk and how we can practice at home. The first thing I do is get off on the right foot with a dog. So for me as a trainer, the moment I walk in the door, I don't give a dog my attention. I don't greet them by looking at them, by talking to them or by touching them and I ask them to stay out of my personal space. I do all of this, number one, because once you get used to it, you realize how rude, impulsive, and pushy it is for a dog to run up to you, get in your space, demand your attention, and not let up until you give it to them. But also because this turns me into someone that a dog wants to listen to. So I don't greet a dog. I don't let them in my space. As I move through the house, I'm asking Roscoe to not lay in walkways, to yield space to me. And all of this is affecting how he sees me and how we're gonna move through the world together. I cannot wait to share this journey with you because you're gonna see that it's a huge transformation and it's really not as hard as you think it's gonna be if you know the tricks of what to do. Can't wait to show you. Uh, uh, Roscoe, out. Roscoe, out. Uh, uh, uh. So if I want Roscoe to listen to me on the walk when I ask him not to pull, which is a lifelong habit, I need to be sure that I am someone he is naturally inclined to listen to. So for me, this means asking a dog to stay out of my personal space, not giving them attention every time they solicit it, or in general, when they're soliciting it. It doesn't mean that I completely ignore them. It just means that I decide on my terms when to give them attention, and it's when they're calm. I need to uh, be sure that when I move through the world, he moves out of my space. If I want this to happen on the walk, it also needs to happen in the home. This is our most important practice ground. So um, it's my first day here and I'm sitting on the couch. And as you could see, Roscoe was laying in the walkway because it was kind of the best place to lay. 
So twice I asked him to move when I walked by and then I realized this isn't working. I don't wanna have to move him whenever I stand up. It's not about like harassing the dog, right? And I don't want him in the way, but I needed to change the situation instead of changing him or changing me. So I moved the furniture, I put down a dog bed and that is going to help him have a place to go that's out of my way. I widened the walkway so I have more room. And this way I will ask him to move if it's a tight space and he's in my way. Like if he lays in the middle of that big space, I might ask him to move if I'm going to have to step around him. But as long as there's a clear way for me to go where I'm not inconveniencing myself and even just a few inches these are things that dogs notice. It isn't about me being a princess and wanting a clean path to walk. This is just stuff that's important to dogs. They're gonna notice if I alter my course to walk around them and it says something to them. It says something to them about me and about me and them. And I want to be sending the messages of, hey, I'm important. I wanna be able to walk in a straight line when I have to go from room to room. And there's a lot of floor down here. There's a lot of places you could lay. So be considerate of me. This same way of thinking, this same situation is what is going to play out on the walk. So this is why I need to be practicing at home in these small moments. Good sit. Wait. Sit. Good sit. Sit. Good boy. Sit. Good boy. Good down. Let's go inside. Good boy. Good boy, wait. Uh uh, wait. Okay, come, come. Good job. Hey, Roscoe. Hey, bud. Easy. Uh-uh-uh. Uh-uh, Roscoe. Can you sit? Can you sit? Good boy. Go down. Good boy. Good job. Good boy. Good job. Good boy. Hey, 
this is Allegra. If you're enjoying this video, you would love my new course, How to Heal. This video is a small excerpt from a course where I show my full 12 days with Roscoe and how I took him from polar to polite walker. This shows all of our walks, everything we do on the trails, everything I worked with him on around the house, all the repetition, and you get to see his progress and his regress. This course is designed for anyone who walks their dog, which I hope is all of you, and you are going to love all the information I share because it's going to make your life better now. Roscoe, go to your bed. Roscoe, go to your bed. Go to your bed. Roscoe, good boy. Okay. Roscoe, can you sit? Good boy. Good sit. Wait. Uh uh. Good boy. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, sorry, I'm just training the dog. Yeah, that would be great. He's not aggressive, but no more barking. Uh, uh, Roscoe. 
be easy. Be easy. Good job. Good job. Uh -uh. Thank you so much. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Good job. Uh-uh. Ready? Sit. Good sit. Wait. Uh-uh. Uh, sit. Wait. Good yawn. Easy. Let's go back. Can you sit? Roscoe, sit. We. Wait. Uh-uh. Okay. Uh-uh. Good boy, good sit. You want snip sniff? Good boy, snip sniff. You want to go potty? You want to go potty? Hey, you want to go potty? Bosco, no potty? Here, my legs are in line with his shoulder. Uh-uh. Ideally, I want him to get used to being in line with his ear or even his nose. So my hand is behind me. My hips are forward. My upper body is twisted. Squeeze. Squeeze. Uh -uh. Uh -uh -uh. So I'm not gonna let him drop his nose to smell because he can smell really, really well where we are. His nose is not that far from the ground. He can smell everything. It's just a luxury. So here, I'm gonna see if he wants to pee on that. We're gonna approach slowly. Uh-uh, see, I rewarded it and I lost it. Now we're gonna go into reverse again. He's coming willingly. Guide him back into position. Twist. Uh-uh. Correct up. Correct up. You can see it's coming out of my hand. Uh-uh. I'm going to open my elbow and move my hand lower towards him because I don't want to be holding him back. I want him to feel in there. I used my foot to tap him. Good boy. 
good job, bud. My fingers are fanned. You can squeeze. Now use my bicep. Touch. Good job. So he didn't pee very much. So I'm going to assume he doesn't badly have to pee. No dropping your nose. Let's take a look at his body language. Uh, 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 uh. Keep him on the same side. Don't let him switch sides. We're not gonna be messing with frozen leaves. So here's his body language. It's snowing out, but he's panting. He's not hot. Dogs pant when they're concentrating. Uh -uh. He's panting because this is hard work. Uh -uh. I wish you could see the slack in the leash. My hand's going to be in the way. There you go. Squeeze. There, you can see it. Now he took the slack and ran ahead. So we're gonna do the old back into position. <sighs> Breathe it out, fresh start. Really just a light pinch. Oh, you got ahead of me again. Whoopsies, whoopsies. Now we're getting a little temper tantrum. That's okay, I get it. He's used to pulling. He's not usually asked to do this. So since we had a temper tantrum, I'm gonna go just a little bit longer. And I see some trees over here. So we're gonna take a break. Uh-uh, don't pull. Uh-uh, we'll stop. Okay, you wanna sniff, sniff? You let it run through. You want to sniff, sniff? You're holding it in the end. There, he pulled a little. Oh, no, we're not going to pull. <laughs> you a fady dog? Holding the leash like that. Uh uh. So here we are by some more nature. I'm gonna guide him over using my body and pause because he pulled. And I'll say, you wanna sniff, sniff? Good job, bud. Good boy, go potty. Good boy, go potty. Good boy. Good boy. And he stopped himself before he got to the end there. Good boy. Good job, bud. Good job. Their dogs like these things. You want to go potty? Hey, you want to sniff sniff? Before I'm getting ready to take a walk with a dog that pulls, I want to be sure that I've done the prep work to set them up for success. You can do this. It's really easy if you have a backyard. You can do it in your apartment. You could do it in a building hallway or a parking lot. These are activities that are going to be helpful as you move into the main challenge that you're facing, which is teaching them to be calm on a walk. The hardest thing is when a dog has a lot of pent up energy, and then we try to teach them to be calm and patient in the outlet that they have to release that energy. We're just really setting ourselves up for a challenge. So what I did before I'm getting ready to take Roscoe out after a quiet morning where I was getting some work done, I took Roscoe into the backyard and we did a little bit of fetch just to burn off that top layer of energy and stick with his routine. Then we came inside and I um, set him up to do some trick training. It's my second day with him and I haven't done that yet. I wanted to time it so I could do it before a walk. Trick training engages them mentally, starts to tire them out mentally. It sets a good dynamic that, hey, I'm asking you to do stuff and you're doing it and it's fun for both of us. 
I noticed that he was a little um, uneasy about getting hit on his side and getting his belly rubbed. So whenever I notice something like that, I'm like, oh, I want to work that out for them. I want to desensitize them to that. So after I got him to lay on his side for a second, I started introducing a belly rub into it. So he would have an association with something that he likes. But um, when I was doing the belly rub, which is the first time I've ever, you know, in two days been affectionate with him, he got too excited. And then I lost my nice, calm, thoughtful, working dog that I'm trying to engage. So I got him calmed down with a little break. We did some more work and now I'm gonna get ready. I'm gonna ask him to be patient and respectful and we're gonna go outside. One of the things I realize I do is I'm practicing all the time the skills I need on the walk. So I'm always asking my dog to respect my personal space, to not come up to me whenever they want. I need to look at them and kind of give them a signal of, yes, I'd like for you to continue to approach. And this is okay, I'm not rejecting them. I'm just asking them to pause and check in with me. And this is a really great skill that they need in interactions with other dogs. A lot of problems with dogs are caused by dogs who just run up on dogs. And obviously they get upset when that happens. So practicing with me, maintaining my personal space as I move through the house, asking him not to follow me, asking him not to be underfoot, setting space boundaries. I'll go into a room and I'll ask him not to follow me. So he's getting practice with impulse inhibition. And this is also really useful for separation anxiety. You want to be setting a lot of physical space barriers as you're in the home together. So the only time you're apart isn't when you leave. So asking him to maintain my personal space is something I practice at home. It's a standard and a boundary that I always have. And then it's natural that I ask for it on the walk. I see a lot of dogs jumping into, walking into, stopping in front of um, their owner on walks. And for me, um, this is my livelihood. So if I broke a leg because a dog jumped on me, it would be terrible. And it's also rude. It means that they're distracted. Um, I don't ever want my dog so excited or so focused on something else that they're going to physically knock into me. Sometimes it happens accidentally, but sometimes the dog just doesn't care to be considerate because they haven't been asked to be. I'm also practicing a lot of weight. We're waiting at every single doorway. Every time we go outside, I'm asking him to stay out of the doorway area whenever I go up there. So this is all great practice for him exercising the self-control. He's going to need to not pull on the walk, which will be our afternoon adventure. Good fit. Mm -hmm. We'll go down. Good boy. Sit. 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 Good boy, good sit. Good down. Good down. It's okay. Sit. Down. Good boy, good boy. Good boy, it's okay. It's okay, sit down. Good boy, good boy, good job. Good boy. Good boy. It's okay, it's okay, sit down. Wait, wait. Good down. Wait. Uh-uh. Wait. Uh-uh. Wait. Uh-uh. Wait. Uh-uh. Wait. Good boy. Good boy. Uh-uh. Down. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. 
good boy. Yes, 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 good boy. Good boy, daddy. Yes, 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 good boy. Good boy. Ready? Wait. Uh-uh. Wait. Good boy. Take it. Wait. Uh-uh. Wait. Uh-uh. Wait. Good boy. Take it. Daddy. It's okay. Good boy. Good boy. Good job. Down. Good boy, good boy. Yes, good boy. Sit down. Good Wait. Okay, good down. Uh-uh. 
set. Wait. Wait. Uh-uh. So on Thursday, this dog was dragging me up the mountain. That's all you need when your dog is calm. And it can happen just as fast as that. Here I have a dog I can think about taking off leash. And he's not perfect, that's okay. But he's responding to very light cues. All I'm doing is wiggling my fingers. And then I wait for him to come back and we go again. That's it. He's doing great and he's happy. And he's out. And that's all it took. Unfortunately, it was on the walk, but I hope you can see that a lot of it we did at home, not on the walk. Oh boy. Uh -uh. Ready? Uh -uh. Ready? Do a little hand over fist there. Uh uh. <sighs> okay, bud. Heel. And this should be a relatively easy transition. If I'm letting him get so excited on the long line or the full leash, rather that this is really hard to go back to. They're just too excited. They lost their thinking brain that's capable of walking like this. And he's learning to resist smelling every plant. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. Here's where we are. Pretty amazing. And when I stopped, he stopped on a loose leash. So that's what I want. I'm a happy trainer. And now I'm going to raise my energy. Heal up. Uh -uh. And that little wiggle is just a reminder to him. So when you're doing this, some of you might be thinking, all the joy is gone from my dog's life. And you might be feeling really guilty. A couple of reasons for this. Number one, what we see as happy is actually overexcited. It's overstimulated. So I'm looking at a dog that is 
a little bit out of their mind and other people are seeing a dog that is happy. So to me, happiness is more of a calm, peaceful contentment. Um, if they get wild, they're gonna act wild. Another reason is a lot of us don't like working. So we feel bad putting our dog to work. But if you had no job other than to be adored, I mean, the idea is nice, but you wouldn't like it. So it's really kind to give our dogs a job. They enjoy being asked to use their brain. It's a muscle, they like riddles, and it's nice to set a bar that they can rise up to. I think uh, the reason uh, 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 a lot of people don't leash train their dog is it's hard, they don't know how, they're like, eh, like the dog just pulls. He's just incapable of not pulling. But it's like, yo, you don't think very highly of your dog. This dog learned so, so fast. So that's really important. Your dog is still having a good time. And beyond the moment, because yeah, sometimes it is frustrating and stressful in that learning process, especially if we're not setting them up for success and they're getting it wrong a lot. But think about it in the bigger picture. This is going to make your dog so happy because they're gonna get to go out with you more. They're gonna get to go more places, see more things, be around different people and animals, be out in the world. So remember, even if the learning process is frustrating, hold that vision for your dog and yourself of all the great things you can do once you get this ironed out. Because dogs that don't pull, dogs that are tuned in, dogs that are calm and polite with distractions, get to go more places, they get to lead a fuller life. So even if it's hard, don't feel bad, take manageable steps, work in the house, work at the front door, in your hallway, driveway, walkway, work on the one block in front of your house. Don't go further until you're getting it right in the quiet places. And if you graduate and you need to go back, that's okay too. My only job is to be exactly where my dog is at. My job isn't to make progress really, really fast. And the paradox there is that the slow way is the fastest way. Because when I move right with my dog, not advancing until they're succeeding, they pick it up so quickly. When I try to go too far too fast and I over challenge, over stress them so they're failing a lot, they're gonna start having negative associations. No one likes losing all the time. So going slower is the fastest way.